very warm welcome to all of you and it's my privilege to to anchor this uh, post lunch session you know uh, the beauty of this segment is that you get a niche audience you know. uh, so let's have a quick quiz you know uh, that will increase your attention span further so can you guess on average uh, how much mobile data an indian consumes per month can anyone guess so it's 20 gb you know uh, as per a nokia report that came out in 2022 and it is likely to be doubled by 2024 so let's begin the session uh, so our guests for the panel are shay mukherjee is the co-founder co-founder and director brandways communication pramod malu founder and ceo creative machines Nimesh Shah, founder of Windchime Communications, Kuntal Chatterjee, CEO of Digital Googly, and Jason Thomas, co-founder and CEO, CMO, Blue Stick Media. A very warm welcome to all of you, and uh, absolutely an honor to have you here on this panel. And Priyanka has given us a really interesting topic, you know, balancing technology and creativity, uh, uh, you know, in terms of you know, uh, digital marketing in regional parts of India. you know as we all have seen that how uh, digital landscape of the country has uh, you know undergone significant change uh, in terms of uh, uh, audience uh, content format and consumption pattern you know from english speaking india to 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 bharat you know with diverse languages and from you know small data packs to 24 by 7 uh, wifi and from media to to a bouquet of you know social media platforms you know short videos um, uh, so digital you know ecosystem has evolved quickly over the you know uh, a decade i guess right and the number of you know uh, internet consumers have also gone up uh, up to 750 million you know as per a kantar report and there is a strong adoption of fiji uh, you know 5g uh, Uh, as well like i mean according to a report the 70 million devices were shipped in india in 2022 so of course i think uh, there is a huge scope for brands uh, you know in terms of digital and we would like to understand from our panelists okay, how brands are you know navigating uh, this digital landscape uh, shay my first question goes to you what is the major difference between the marketing approaches of uh, of the national and regional brands so uh, hello everyone good afternoon uh, uh, thanks kanchan for welcoming us uh, i would first uh, respond to your question so uh, see i think national uh, brands have a more 360 degree approach when it comes to uh, taking their campaigns ahead uh, you know Uh, be it like television outdoor radio and digital and you know multiple channels whereas because regional brands are limited in terms of their market presence you know their channel distribution they uh, opt for more uh, i think targeted communication which are like sponsorships and you know local community events getting associated with cultural festivals specific to a particular region which has a larger impact i believe uh, but then uh, you know regional brands also have to justify their brand ambassador costs and sponsorships because they are they are you know limited by the markets that they operate uh, however one thing that we distinctly find is i think local uh, brands or regional brands because of their uh, you know language and cultural connect i think they create more brand affinity within that uh, local region among themselves i think there are a lot of examples of you know brands from east which uh, enjoys a huge market share in that market whereas there are other brands nationally who cannot who find it difficult into you know penetrating into that uh, particular region so this i think uh, you know by far i think culture and uh, economics are, are, are two distinct things which make sure that you know the national strategies and regional strategies are very different from one another yeah interesting you promote uh, uh, so how how do urban semi urban and rural markets differ from each other when it comes to ad spend 
So I think uh, if, if I were to respond to this, uh, first we need to understand the different kind of uh, audience. It boils down to this basic formula that we use whenever we have to uh, look at a campaign. Uh, the formula is A, B, C, understanding the audience, understanding the brand, and then understanding the category that it represents. Uh, in To respond to this question, I think the A becomes more important than the B and C. It is about the kind of audience which is in the urban market, vis-a-vis uh, -vis semi-urban and rural markets. And uh, the, the, the difference can be represented by the kind of uh, audience size to uh, the taste and preferences, the way they consume content, and so on and so forth. But uh, I would sum it up in one word, which is the cosmopolitan crowd in case of a urban uh, uh, ca case, vis-a-vis -vis, uh, a semi-urban and rural. And uh, with, with you know the cosmopolitan crowd uh, coming into consideration, I think you get uh, a better results uh, if you're uh, looking at the same budgets in the two contexts because of uh, one language that can work in case of a rural market vis-a-vis -vis, uh, multiple languages that you need to run the ads in case of uh, cosmopolitan, in, in case of a urban market. So ad spend needs to be uh, un, you know, worked around uh, considering the key objective and uh, the kind of uh, audiences that we are catering to. If, if uh, anybody wants to add something to this. Yeah, Namish, yeah. Well, I mean, I think the audience part is totally, you know, taken into account. And I think people in the room would say that, uh, you know, any marketer right now would know that if you want to tap into a tier two, tier three, or a rural market, you typically have four A's that you need to look at, right? You have awareness, availability, your acceptability, and affordability. These are the four A's that you need to tap into if you really want to make any kind of dent in that market. So if you see right now the aspiration level in the rural market has, or the tier two, three, four markets has really gone up. And uh, 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 to me, you know, that is like, I see like a big change that's come in and uh, you have brands now, let's say like uh, you see LG, they have launched a brand, a variant called Sampurna you know, which is made specially for the, uh, the tier two, three, four markets, uh, so that the acceptability and the affordability kind of goes up, right? So uh, I, I, I think that uh, when you have that audience that is changing now, uh, people in that area are moving from becoming price conscious to more value conscious, right? There is lower persuasion now. Earlier in the smaller markets, you would see a lot more persuasion required. So that's kind of, you know, come down. Uh, so I, I, I think that uh, we see a lot of newness now, you know, that's coming into those there are new trends coming in. I see also in these tier three and four markets, the rise of nano influencers. Like, you know, if you ask me, uh, 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 what's some what are some things, the new trends that are coming up? You know, one of them would be that where we have seen brands where, who have now worked at uh, connecting with Sarpanch, you know, at that level, connecting with who you would have like a master G, you know, in every village. And they've made WhatsApp groups with them. And uh, they've been building communication now through WhatsApp. And they're realizing that while ATL does its job, you support it with these kind of WhatsApp communities. Uh, then you have a good blend of offline, online, you know, I mean, both the things moving in together. I mean, so you have multi-mediums that are at play. I've also seen, uh, you know, rise of uh, targeted advertising. Like uh, when you're working for a lot of these tier two brands, I mean, brands catering to tier two, three markets, I saw micro influence, uh, insurance, sorry, you know, growing a lot. So you had uh, 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 guys who were reaching out to small outlets and getting them to do insurance for their entire outlet. And they were using advertising, digital ads, in local online versions of newspapers and all, and tapping into those small shops and giving them insurance for, you know, 50,000 or uh, one lakh, the sum assured of 50,000 to one lakh. So they were insuring and all of that, and they were using targeted digital advertising. So, you know, you see these kind of very interesting trends and patterns coming in, 
to you know which the brands are able to now tap into very interesting insight namesh thank you and kuntal how do you optimize ads uh, ads ko aap kaise optimize karte hain uh, jab india ki aap vast geography dekhe diversity dekhe cultural jo hamare differences hai how do you optimize that so uh, hello aaj ka abhi जो इंटरनेट यूज़र एंड स्मार्टफोन यूज़र डे बाय डे इंक्रीज़ हो रहा है तो रीच हम लोग इजीली अभी कर सकते हैं और अभी जो रूरल और जो विलेज एरिया है इसमें अभी इंटरनेट एंड स्मार्टफोन के यूजेज भी बढ़ रहे हैं सो दे आर नो अबाउट द ब्रांड उन लोगों का लाइफ भी चेंज हो रहा है तो यहाँ पर रीच करना डिफिकल्ट डिफिकल्टी नहीं है बट यहाँ पे मेरा जो एक्सपीरियंस और मेरा जो आ, हमको ये लगता है हम लोगों को लोक का तीन मेरे ख्याल से तीनों ची तीन चीज़ को हम लोगों को हाईलाइट करना चाहिए सो दैट एड को ऑप्टिमाइज़ कर सकते हैं और उस कस्टमर को इंगेज कर सकते हैं वन इज़ लोकल लैंग्वेज हम जिस हम बंगाल के बात कर रहे हैं हम जब भी कोई रूरल एरिया में कैंपेन हम लोग करते हैं तो बेंगोली भाषा यूज़ करते हैं वहाँ पर कोई इंग्लिस वर्ड बा अर्बन uh, का जो एड का जो कॉपी होता है और रूरल का जो कॉपी बहुत डिफरेंस होता है ये एक चीज़ सेकेंड हम लोग कल्चर रूरल एरिया का कल्चर उन लोगों का इमोशन ये तीनों चीज़ मिला के हम लोग कुछ एडवर्टाइजिंग और कैंपेन बनाएंगे तो उन लोगों को इंगेज करना बहुत इजी हो जाएगा तो आज का डेट में रीचिंग इज नॉट ए फैक्टर How to engage? That is our biggest challenge. लेकिन बजट तो कम होगा अगर हम रूरल की बात करेंगे टीयर टू टीयर थ्री सिटीज में एड का बजट कम होगा फिर ये कैसे आप कर पाते हैं हमें इज इट इजी टू डू दैट इन लिमिटेड बजट देखिए आपका जो कोई प्रोडक्ट कोई सर्विस इसका बजट उसका टारगेट ऑडियंस इज रूरल एरिया तो मे बी इसका बजट यहाँ पे बजट का हम नहीं बात कर रहे हम एड ऑप्टिमाइज उस हम लोग जो आ, क्या बोलते हैं सर आपको लैंग्वेज और उसको जब तक हम इंगेज नहीं कर पाएंगे तो बजट आपका वेस्टेज होगा so i think that you know the fact that national brands come with a lot of budget when it comes to a pan india campaign uh, they are aware that the spillage is very high but the sheer fact that regional brands don't have that uh, high volume of budget even they don't have the you know uh, mind space to really go off that kind of a spillage the pressure is on the marketing team and the agency to optimize the campaign as much as possible and maximize the uh, uh, results in terms of maybe impression or you know engagement i think that is what kuntul is trying to say that you know that's where we have to uh, you know for example what hap- what works in bengal will not work in odisha it's so complicated what works in odisha will not work in jharkhand so if like for example kolkata is a very strong headquarter for the entire east and northeast and we almost operate campaigns for brands in the this larger region we face the you know heat of customizing state wise communication so much because we strongly know that you know what works here will not just a few kilometers apart it will not work it's a very interesting point yeah jason i think you know building upon uh, ashaik's argument i mean your question is uh, what is the difference between the uh, big brands and the small brands when it comes to ad budgets uh yeah um uh, so we work with both uh, you know uh, big and small brands in the e-commerce space space and also in the performance marketing space uh so what i have seen is that um, when it comes to uh, bigger brands we usually sign off a 12 year uh, 12 month contract at least and we have to forecast and on the media spends and everything for 12 months so uh, it is uh, not flexible after that it is very hard to add a new platform to optimize something new extra into that Uh, because it, it has a bigger hierarchy and uh, the point of contact that we have might not have the you know the 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 you know the ambition or something like that to go ahead and change that right so uh, 
So there are both pros and cons for that. Like we can test with a hu huge budget, and uh, as the budget goes higher, and when the beca brand becomes, uh, you know, more, uh, you know, uh, when the brand is bigger, the CTRs, for example, the click-through rates, uh, the engagement also gr uh, grows because it's very familiar, right? Uh, people already know about the brand, uh, so we don't really need to optimize the ads that that much because whenever see that uh, they see that the logo is there, the, there will be a brand ambassador. For example, we are working with one client who has 13 different brand amb ambassadors, and we are uh, marketing it in 13 different languages all across India. And we can see that uh, from each state, they are using the prime uh, superstar. Like for example, from Kerala, it's, uh, it's the biggest star, Mohanlal, or from uh, Tamil Nadu, it, it could be the biggest star there, uh, right? Uh, so. That is there. It, the the con is that it's not flexible. There is no room for experimentation. We have to, if, if we give a word, we have to do that for the uh, next 12 months until the next uh, renewal comes, right? And the uh, other other part comes, right? When it comes to small businesses, um, experimentation, right? That's where we actually learn. We learn a lot of. Uh, we make a lot of mistakes with uh, smaller brands because we are in t touch with the maybe the brand owner itself, and uh, they can feel our passion. And they can really feel that we want to, you know, bring, uh, do a lot of experiments and bring results, right? So we get, uh, we can do a lot of uh, new experiments, and we learn from these small brands, and we uh, apply to bigger brands, right? Um, and but the other part is that smaller businesses want quicker, uh, uh, tangible results faster. For example, when we work with a D2C company, they want to uh, give, uh, they want when, uh, even before we uh, getting onboarded. Uh, they want us to give them exact figures on how much, uh, you know, return on ad spend are you going to give us, etc. Uh, right. So, uh, and if everybody knows that when when we start a campaign, we at least need a 15 day, 20 year, even a month's time to understand what works and what doesn't. Right. So, sometimes smaller brands are uh, not that patient enough. Right. Uh, so there are a lot of pros and cons, and uh, uh, we we learn from both. But uh, I think smaller brands are more exciting to work with because our impact really comes there. And then um, bigger brands, uh, definitely, we need that also, right, to uh, make sure that uh, everything goes well in, in, in the agency. Pramod Shaik or maybe uh, uh, Kuntal, would you like to you know, share some perspective from, from eastern parts of the country? I mean, he's sharing from uh, south, right? Look, so uh, whenever, you know, I, I completely agree with what uh, He's saying that when you work with a smaller brand, uh, A, there is a, a better coordination and uh, the results, when you're able to bring some results uh, with, with the best, uh, with the limited budgets and optimizing those budgets, uh, you can see the visible results and not just visible results on the Excel sheet, but also on the face of the client. So that is, that is where working with a, a smaller client SME uh, segment, to say so, uh, is more satisfying as an agency, I would say. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah. I just want to add here that, uh, you know, a lot of times, uh, you know, digital is technology and technology is science. And science cannot work without experimentation, right? What works for one client will never work for maybe the same client in the same category. That's one of the challenges, like every, every business is very different from each other, be it uh, its audience, its pitch, its positioning, everything. Uh, but, uh, you know, a lot of clients do, like smaller clients do come with the gap of faith that, you know, media spends would, like we have had clients who have, say, 400 CR annual budget in marketing and next year they're making it 550 CR. This is purely from their faith which they have gained in the last few years. But for a new startup to really start off with even a 25 CR media budget is very, very difficult unless they get that. And that is where, you know, a lot of, uh, like we collaborating with a PR agency, with a media agency, coming together, maybe a mainline agency, and giving that faith to the client becomes very, very important. I think that's where even the CMO's role becomes very, very important uh, to you know motivate the promoter of the business. Oh, brands and CMOs are listening to this. Yeah. Yeah. Just, just a, just a thought, I know, slightly different one is that. So you know, we started out with Bombay, Delhi, right, for quite a few years, and then. Uh, as we started growing, we started getting into the more tier two, three markets to set up our branches out there. I, uh, 
trust me, between whether it's a Bombay-based client or you know uh, another state capital client, all clients really want bang for the buck. You know, so I've really not come across any client who's been you know less enthusiastic or less demanding from the kind of results that they would want. As an agency, our job is to be very honest to the brand and to them, right? To to be able to say that look, this is what is going to work, and uh, or this is not going to work, and only spend X amount and don't spend more. So it's that ability to kind of work with them, uh, be it from a metro client or a small client, a small city client. It's uh, building that trust, showing them results along the way, and we've seen huge budgets even coming from regional brands. So long as you're able to deliver results, be honest with them, guide them properly, uh, those rules remain the same, you know, irrespective of a national brand or a, or a regional brand at play. So. Yeah, money is important for everyone, I guess, yeah. So moving on to the second round, and Shayak, how do regional markets, you know, differ, uh, you know, from the national in terms of brand communication? Okay, so uh, I would like to start off with something amazing that is going on in our country right now, right? Like when we were growing up, the heroes of yesteryears used to sing songs in Uti and Darjeeling, right? And then in the 90s, we saw them go out to Switzerland and New York and all these places. All of a sudden, you know, if you see in the last three, four years, the heroes are from Bareilly and Ranchi and, uh, you know, Mirzapur. And, and, and that's a huge shift that is happening. People are unable to relate with Switzerland anymore. I don't see those visuals in any of the recent uh, movies, even the top stars understand that very, very well, right? So, uh, you know, regions are very different from each other. Uh, we, as I said, like, we, we have offices in Kolkata and Hyderabad. Kolkata is a very different uh, region uh, because from Kolkata we cater to uh, Assam, Assam market as well as Odisha market. But sitting in Hyderabad, it's very challenging for us to even cater to Karnataka, which is just maybe a few kilometers away because, you know, we don't understand anything about that side of the border. Even Maharashtra is close. However, Andhra Pradesh and Telangana share the same culture. Like, you can have a brand uh, who signs up junior NTR and who goes massively, you know, that campaign will be successful in these two markets, but it will absolutely have no impact in Karnataka, Kerala, Tamil Nadu, anywhere. And you have to have, like, uh, you know, Jason mentioned, you have to have separate faces for different. But this is a completely different from North. You know, if you can have one superstar and it will cut through the entire North market. So regions do vary in terms of, uh, you know, not just culture, language, but also, you know, how these uh, festivals come up. For example, like, if you know Bengal market, Durga Puja, of course, is not just a five-day festival, but the entire shopping season is just pre Durga Puja. So most of our clients have started their campaigns and you know they will have a huge uh, uh, sales season coming up. Whereas this kind of a phenomena where, where almost I would say that brands spend 50 to 60% of their annual budget in this period uh, because they do make 50, 60% of their entire sales in this tenure. This is completely, you know, uh, like a season like Ganesh Chaturthi has no inf impact in Bengal at all, right? And that kind of a Durga Puja festival is not replicated anywhere in the country. So every region is very different and that's where today you see a, lo a lot of national brands approaching regional agencies to, you know, help them out, extend their communication. Maybe the routes have been set nationally, but you extend those com campaigns and help us penetrate into the rural mindsets. Um, that's where I think most of the regional agencies play a very, very important role. Pramod, uh, would you like to add something? Uh, just, just to add to the last point that Shaikh made, uh, we are in talks with CRED, uh, trying to get them, uh, you know, tre CRED has uh, recently introduced UPA transactions uh, as part of their offerings and, uh, you know, looking at the madness of Durga Puja, we are trying to, uh, you know, do something uh, in terms of brand awareness, in terms of increasing the uh, app installs, in terms of increasing the transactions made via UPI, trans uh, UPI uh, of CRED. So absolutely, s regional uh, agencies have uh, the ability to do something which uh, the, the main uh, stream re uh, central agencies cannot. Uh, this is one of the classic examples that CRED is trying to uh, work with creative machines 
in collaboration to activate the UPA transaction offerings that they have launched very recently, just about two months back. Pramod, we would also you know, like you to explain uh, the importance of rich media content and videos in marketing. Rich media content videos uh, is, is one of the most efficient uh, ways in which uh, an advertiser is able to uh, A, increase the awareness, brand awareness, improve the conversions, and uh, get better retention. Uh, why so? Because the attention span of users is just decreasing with every passing year. I remember uh, seven, eight years back, it used to be 15 seconds. From there, it came down to 12, 10, 8. And now in our agency at Creative Machines, we uh, have a clear mandate, 2.5 seconds. Yes, 2.5 seconds. If you uh, get the customer on your side, it's, it's, a, it's a win. Otherwise, uh, you know, there's something wrong. So when we are at the strategy level, uh, deciding on the communication, the creative, and the overall uh, uh, the process, we always keep that in mind that uh, it has to create an impact in 2.5 seconds precisely. So. Uh, Nimesh, I mean, do consumer sensibilities and creatives vary, you know, from state to state? Oh, yeah, I think uh, India is one of the most uh, heterogeneous market ever, right? I mean, in terms of not just creatives, but uh, you look at the, uh, uh, you look at the copy, you look at the medium, uh, you know, the mediums that are there. I'll give you a few examples, you know, just to, I uh, remember this for uh, one of our uh, you know, baby care clients, right? They wanted to do a national campaign, a digital campaign. So we were we were running ads on multiple sites and catering to the metros and also the tier two and three cities, right? So these ads, while they were running, we got a we got a very good response from uh, the metro audience first. We could see a lot of conversions happening. And mind you, the creatives were fairly simple, but uh, it, it just this example just shows. You know, you need to understand your consumer mindset. I mean, you know, where they are and how they operate. So we got a good response from the women or the moms, the new moms, who were residing in metros. But we were not getting such a good response from the tier two and three cities. So obviously we started figuring out what's going on. And we realized that in a lot of those cities, they were relying on uh, the digital behavior. So they were relying on uh, surfing at the late evenings or night. So either when their kids who are using desktops at their home have, uh, you know, post their dinner or when their husbands typically would come back and they would now get the laptop to themselves. So you would see a lot of women in tier two and three cities who were digitally savvy, but they were getting access to the machine only later in the evening or night. So when they would finish dinner and the kids, you know, would be put to sleep, they would actually log on and they would surf from 10 p.m. to midnight. And we saw a far higher conversion of those baby care products during that time. Right? So, I mean, it's just one of those examples. Of, I, I once even, I'll just give you another one uh, pretty quickly. To, I remember once while traveling in Tamil Nadu uh, for one of the beauty brands. And, uh, you know, when you see beauty cues, you, know, you want to look out what really uh, beauty stands for in each state. Uh, now in Tamil Nadu, again in the smaller towns, we could see a lot of women uh, home, you know, making at home a turmeric paste. You know, because turmeric is like, it's, it's the yellow color is very auspicious, right? And they make this paste and they apply it on their face for a, for a better skin. And so the beauty cue for a brand was that if it's a slightly yellow in color, you know, it would have a much better impact for me and it would hold a high beauty value. But the same yellow color, if you were to show it in your creatives in, let's say, a northern or a western region, it would mean completely different, right? So I think the, the, there's a very high level of understanding required from your Indian consumer, how they operate, how they react to different color schemes, copy, content, uh, media vehicles. So it's very important to kind of understand that uh, and then do the campaigns. Very nicely put. Uh, Kuntal, chaliye uh, brand samaj liya, apna consumer samaj liya, thik hai. Lekin brand se digital spending ke liye paisa nikalna kitna tough hai. I mean, are they, you know, it's, it's very easy to, to get, you know, money for digital, especially in, in you know, regional parts. 
सी अभी जो रीजनल बैंड दे आर अंडरस्टूड द डिजिटल मार्केटिंग इज रिक्वायर्ड फॉर देम सो दे आर कम हम लोगों के पास आ रहा है मार्केटिंग के लिए तो यहाँ पे एक चीज हम लोग फेस करते हैं जो कितना स्पेंड कर रहे हैं कितना रिटर्न आ रहा है तो ये चीज़ में हम लोगों को बहुत मेहनत करना पड़ता है जैसे कोई होटल मैनेजमेंट स्कूल तो उसको लीड कितना लीड्स आ रहा है लीड्स तक ठीक है उसका कॉन्वर्सन हो रहा है कि नहीं हो रहा है वो भी हम लोगों को देखना पड़ता है क्योंकि जब तक कॉन्वर्सन नहीं होगा तो मेरा भी नेक्स्ट मंथ का बिजनेस बिजनेस सिक्योर नहीं होगा तो हम लोग एक चेन की तरह काम करते जे एक हम लोग एक सॉफ्टवेयर मेंटेन करते हैं जे क्लाइंट को कितना पैसा खर्चा कर रहा है उसके अगेंस्ट में कितना लीड्स आ रहा है और क्या कॉन्वर्सन आ रहा है तो यहाँ पे हम लोग ये भी करते हैं जो सेल्स बंदा है क्लाइंट का उसको भी हम लोग अभी ट्रेन करना शुरू कर दिया सो दैट क्लाइंट को रिजल्ट मिले और रिजल्ट मिलने से क्या होगा जैसे अभी मेरा पास जो क्लाइंट एक जैसे एक सुपर एक डिटर्जेंट कंपनी है तो वी आर वर्किंग लास्ट सिक्स इयर्स लास्ट थ्री लास्ट थ्री इयर्स देस लोग जो ए टी एल बी टी एल का जो बजट है वो स्टॉप कर दिया और पूरा जो बजट है डिजिटल मार्केटिंग में शिफ्ट कर दिया तभी क्या है उसका मार्केटिंग कॉस्ट भी कम है और उसका रिटर्न भी ज़्यादा है तो अभी ये जो चीज़ है क्योंकि उसका जो मार्केट एरिया है तो हम लोग सिर्फ वहीं पर ही फोकस करें जहाँ पर उसका प्रोडक्ट अवेलेबल है तो ये एक चीज़ होता है क्योंकि लेकिन यहाँ पे एक चीज़ हम लोगों का हर टाइम एक देखना पड़ता है क्लाइंट को बिजनेस जनरेट हो रहा है कि नहीं हो रहा है तो इसके ऊपर हम लोगों को बहुत सारे मेहनत करना पड़ता है तब जाके नेक्स्ट मंथ रिन्यूअल होता है वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग पॉइंट जैसे व्हाट इज योर फीडबैक ऑन दिस आई थिंक प्रॉबली आई से दैट बिफोर कोविड वॉज वेरी हार्ड वेन एवर वी सी ए ब्रांड वी हैड टू पिच वाट डिजिटल मार्केटिंग वॉज um uh, that was the first like one hour conversation like hey, this is digital marketing you know you can put ads here and there people are actually using it etc but post covid you know people that that conversation has ended right um and especially uh, you know uh, internet usage has uh, you know exceeded a lot of you know even the after covid the graph has gone um, i th- i don't think it's it was it is linear i think it has gone like kind of um, exp- exponential right um so i don't think you know any i even in uh, especially in my region kerala i think kerala has the most amo- amount of internet users in terms of population percentage uh, i i think after delhi and npr so it's kind of already uh, the space is already established and uh, they are okay right now if if you take an example last month uh, two clients came to us and said that uh, they both are south india clients they said that okay we are not spending anything on tv or ads or uh, offline or ohs or ohs um and we are experimenting uh, this year full with just digital and we are interesting you guys uh, we don't know what what is exactly that but everybody around us like they are they have a lot of people uh, maybe friends or other brands or other uh, consultants right everybody is telling them to just stop e- tv and you know invest everything on digital i don't i don't absolutely agree to that i i i believe that you know digital cannot sometimes you know some use cases digital cannot give you the uh, all, all all kind of solutions right for example if you want to build a national uh, brand you need to advertise on ipl or something like that right i uh, think it differs from state to state because yeah, yeah. as you rightly mentioned that kerala has in you know, i think one of the highest internet pre- penetration right and just in uh, one more thing i think uh, yeah. i wanted to add is i think the chief marketing officer plays has to play a very big role where i feel that uh, and this is my experience personally that in the regional markets it's very difficult for a brand to get a good cmo and uh, because uh, like as a digital agency like we also work in mainline but i know that when you we work as a digital agency and there's a mainline you need a cmo who needs to strategize because digital agencies don't set the path you know the brands need to come across and share the guidelines with us which a lot of brands do face that difficulty i think like uh, there are a lot of founders and entrepreneurs don't have that skill in them and they need a good cmo within their like or a brand manager to really pull forward but the problem is that you know it's very difficult to retain a brand manager most of them you know have career aspirations and they will move towards bangalore and you know bombay and all where on the other side when you 
meet such brands where you know they understand the importance that you know this this category is a marketing driven category and we need a cmo as you know maybe co-founder or on the board it becomes very easy for agencies to you know engage because you don't need to do the hard work of convincing the client that why should you invest in marketing i think that's an added struggle which we all <laughs> face uh, where you know we don't we, we kind of have a co-founder or a founder in front of us instead of a cmo so if anyone you know wishes to seize the job you know where to apply thank you shayak for for this insight and uh, just and i had just one question i mean as kerala has you know one of the highest penetration in india uh, so how do brands look at you know uh, the the internet penetration and high speed internet and also do we have a lot of ai virtual uh, influence a lot of things are coming how do brands look at this Uh, uh, the numbers are great like uh, as you said i think in in india there are about 750 million uh, people online but still i think it's about uh, 50% of the population right uh, so there is room for improvement but it is the biggest um, market in the globe when it comes to if you want views or downloads or numbers right so that's why you know uh, india is the biggest market for facebook whatsapp or any any kind of uh, consumer facing um, apps uh, so Uh, but the one thing is that the conversion percentage or the uh, viewership to payment or viewership to subscription or click to purchase these kind of uh, metrics are not that still not there yet when you compare it with the us or uk definitely not there yet for example recently i um, heard uh, uh, the ceo of spotify india talking about the uh, percentage of people who are actively subscribed to the 50 rupee per month uh, that right that is just 12 percentage in india right so but if you look at the number of users uh, for spotify india is in the top 5 of the countries but if you look at the uh, people who are paying for that subscription it is uh, in the other other country section right so that is a problem that i think we need to fix maybe it is a mentality shift that we need to make maybe still you know people need to need some offline convincing to make a purchase right um, so that is one thing there are there are two parts of the coin one is really great like the numbers are great now you know, if if we get at least uh, you know um, 100 million or 200 million people who are willing to pay um, for all kind of services online then it will be like brands will be like the brands will go crazy globally right <coughs> so let's have a rapid fire round it's a fun round and and, and i wish you answer you know such ka samna kind of thing no sugar coating uh, so i'll start with you know with shay so two most promising in independent agencies apart from your own of course okay it's a very tricky question uh, see i personally fo- i think when we started as a web design company we used to follow bc webwise a lot from bombay they were doing some really good work and now of course you know i i'm like i'm a big fan of shebang and uh, social beat i think I these guys are here i don't uh, know they do a great work i think I, we, we we like i personally follow them a lot a huge round of applause for both of you please and kuntal uh, jab brands paise nahi dete to sabse badhiya kaun se do bahane banate payments delay hote hai na sab jagah <laughs> sabse badhiya kaun se do bahane sune aap सर अभी नहीं है सर बाहर गए हुए ऐसे कुछ आंसर मिलता है जैसे और इस महीने बिजनेस अच्छा नहीं हुआ प्रोवाइड करना होगा ये सब बहाना हम लोग आई थिंक वन ऑफ द नेट बैंकिंग में सर्वर इशू है सर्वर इशू ओके इंटरेस्टिंग आई थिंक द मोस्ट कॉम्प्लेक्स इज पेमेंट इज इन प्रोसेस यू नो यू डोंट नो व्हेन दैट प्रोसेस विल एंड द प्रोसेस तब 5G वगैरह सब चला जाता है निमेश यू वांट टू से I think ye but all of these have put together nahi de rahe paise to there is no end to acha the, the question for you is have you ever blacklisted any brand because of you know payment or with other other issues so oh, quite a few <laughs> quite a few please don't ask me to name them okay. uh, because uh, i'm sure if their if their cmo's change they could still become good brands i mean they would go off the blacklist but uh, surely otherwise quite a few Pramod, give me a chance. Which is which agency you would like to lead, independent or uh, otherwise? Which agency I would like to take? Lead, like, lead, lead. I'd like to lead. Uh, 
apart from mine, of course. Uh, <coughs> so I think, you know, uh, uh, I'll just go down to my memory lane and uh, go back to the agency where I started my career while pursuing my MBA. I was fortunate enough, uh, one of the 820 students who had a chance to intern during the program uh, at Net Elixir, Hyderabad, you know, still remains very, very close to my heart. Net Elixir, founded by Mr. Udayan Bose, doing fantastic work in paid uh, performance campaigns. I think, given a chance, uh, yeah, Net Elixir has given me best of the memories, so why not? Net Elixir. Great. Jason, uh, how do you feel, you know, when you learn that your family members and maybe friends, they have, they are using ad blockers? Oh, uh, last day when uh, I was looking at the threads, right, new app uh, uh, that uh, Zuckerberg recently launched, so one of my friend's first post was that, hey, these are the best ad block that you can use. Uh, and he, he was naming some uh, uh, ad blockers. So uh, uh, my first thread comment was that, hey, please don't use ad blockers. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you. So mov moving on to the third round, Nishayak, I think you just mentioned that you have, you know, a couple of uh, your offices in different states. So what prompted you to set up offices in, in Hyderabad and uh, See, other I think states? As we discussed that the importance of regional agencies are really going big. And, uh, you know, we have had a long experience in Kolkata for almost like 15, 16 years we were in Kolkata. After that, we thought of going into another territory. Uh, that's primarily because, you know, the kind of clientele we were working, say, from Bombay or Delhi, whom we were representing in Bengal or Assam or Orissa, we were, uh, you know, we could understand that they're still facing a lot of challenges. I think, you know, brands in the north have a lot of challenge penetrating in the south. And, uh, you know, though it sounds like digital agencies, you can sit in one location and do Pan India, you can do that only when the brand communicates in English. Uh, if you have to get regional, uh, you know, you cannot Google and understand the culture of Karnataka and Tamil Nadu. You need to be there. And uh, trust me, when we, swear, we, we first started with Hyderabad, now we are, like maybe by the end of this year, we'll get into Bangalore. We, we know that, we have understood that, you know, we cannot play any role there. You know, we don't know anything about that market, right? We just know that maybe Ugadi is a holiday, but nothing more than that, you know, what does that culture work and how does it work? And that's not our job. So getting the best of local talent, I think, plays a very, very important role. And, you know, when, you, when we went outside Bengal, we just found that, you know, the collaboration of these talents from multiple regions have a huge impact on how, you know, what we serve to our clients. Today, we have started using our, you know, uh, team from Hyderabad for some campaigns in Bengal also. And, you know, that really, really helps a lot, I think, uh, certainly for, uh, I, I don't want to say this, but we have, we have seen a lot of brain drain from the East because of opportunities. But when we as an agency move to another territory, we could find some talent, maybe in terms of not just creative area, but also in technology and digital. And that's where, you know, we are focusing more on building that sort of a team from Hyderabad who could help brands in the East also. So this is one of the key, I think, insight. I think very I significant mention. trend you have pointed out. Thank you, Shayak. And Pramod, uh, uh, we have seen, uh, we are seeing a lot of merger and acquisitions happening in the ad sector. What do you feel when you see some acquisitions? Do you feel threatened or maybe you feel happy, whatever? So, you know, uh, mostly, mostly national agencies, they acquire regional agencies. Okay. Right? Uh, okay. So I understand you're saying uh, when a national agency acquires a regional agency, uh, I think it's a fantastic thing. It's a, it's a win win. The regional agency benefits by getting to know more uh, about the better practices, better systems, uh, the learning curve is faster. And the bigger agency, which is acquiring uh, gets to, uh, you know, play an important role in the campaigns that they are delivering in the regional markets. They can never understand uh, sitting in Delhi what's happening, uh, what is going to work, the psyche of the consumers in Hyderabad or in Kolkata. So uh, I think it's a win-win. And uh, at the end, why I think it's a win-win, uh, not just for the, the two parties, but for the consumer more than anybody else. Because at the end, in a partnership like this, the value that a consumer gets is the maximum. And uh, as an agency, 
uh, what better than a consumer getting the maximum bucks for the money, as you rightly pointed. That's the only thing that matters. And uh, as a as a uh, smaller agency, bigger agency, if uh, a collaboration is able to derive that for the consumer, nothing better than that. But what about the other agencies in the market? I mean, uh, you mean referring to independent agencies? Yeah, yeah. I think independent agencies, uh, if they strive to see, it, it's all about uh, your personal goal and the choices that you make to reach your goal. So, if uh, an agency, a smaller agency, is looking to be part of one of these den shoes and the WPPs and you know so on and so forth, uh, there are opportunities and uh, that could be the winning formula for them. And uh, on the other side, there are agencies like ours. Uh, we are dominating the Eastern India market. We are uh, one of the fastest growing in spite of not being part of any of these bigger agencies and uh, it's working fine for us. You know, uh, it's, it's totally uh, purely a call of the founder of the company. What is the route that he wants to take to excel, move ahead, make progress? Thank you, Pramod. Nimish, my question is, how challenging is to to acquire a skilled manpower in, in s smaller cities? Yeah. Uh, right, so, uh, I mean, after we, after we set up our presence in Bombay and Gurgaon, we then moved to Guwahati. You know, and Guwahati was, uh, 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 we got a huge government project and we, we set up shop there. And I was amazed with the kind of uh, talent that's available you know, in the Northern East, and I, I feel a little ashamed to admit that uh, initially that area was such a, like a blind spot, you know, for us. But once we set up shop over there, we saw the kind of, uh, especially in the space of designers, video editors, uh, uh, you know, graphic, uh, your animation artist, the entire region, Northeast region was just amazing, you know, with the kind of people and the talent that they had. Uh, similarly, later when we when we set up a branch in Bhopal, and we came across uh, a huge set of people so well versed with writing scripts, and uh, especially in Hindi, you know, the Hindi was just so brilliant that you, know, you could write scripts very well. They could write, you know, wo kavita likhte the the, aise, you know, and it, it's just amazing the kind of talent that is available right now in a lot of these cities. Uh, a little bit of grooming is required if you want to keep them in the client-facing role, but that's true with everyone, right? So even if you hire from a metro, you still need to do a bit of grooming for the team. But uh, I think uh, we are blessed with some really talented people across the country, you know, be it that northeast part where we face that or, you know, middle of the country in Bhopal where the writers and script writers and the uh, poets, you know, were brilliant. So uh, no problem at all in recruiting. Just to Agency add to what uh, Mr. Shah said, I think uh, one of the key uh, positions where uh, the grooming and nurturing of the resource becomes the most important is the client-facing uh, individual. If that aspect is taken care, the rest we can manage with a little bit of uh, so less and more. I think, I think Kuntal uh, would like to respond to this question. I think he's setting up an institution to, to train people, right? Kuntal, can you please quickly? Uh, so, uh, Digital marketing scale up ke liye first jo challenges hum face kar hum log face kar that is scale and train manpower. Uh, so isliye hum log training bhi plan kar rahe. Hello. So already hum log training bhi plan kar rahe jo industry mein kaise kam hota hai, uh, kaise client ka jo uh, behavior, client ka kya requirement hai, to uska basis ke upar hum log training hum log shuru kar rahe so that we can train the people for industry. Uh, industry में कैसे manpower चाहिए client का क्या requirement client का क्या uh, behavior इसके ऊपर depend करके हम लोग manpower को train करना हम लोग st uh, start करेंगे uh, एक दो महीने के बाद ही thank you thank you कुंतल Jason uh, just two two biggest opportunities and two constraints just quickly uh, you mean two biggest opportunities in in, in regional parts yeah so, opportunities yeah. opportunities uh, are uh, the same as national, right? You know, uh, in terms of uh, uh, you know uh, what you say, like the creatives, right? The creatives are the opportunities because that is the uh, key uh, thing that differentiates. It's not about the technical stuff, but it's right. about the uh, uh, creatives. That is the biggest opportunity. Um, and the, uh, the next opportunity is that uh, lesser competition. I would say um, everybody knows each other. In in my area, we almost 
uh, uh, knows each other. We know which brand is working with uh, whom. And anyways, you know, that brand, if they didn't get the brand, we'll, they'll come to us. So there is the connect between, uh, right? So we know what's happening in the industry. The cons is that it's, it's really hard to uh, get, a, uh, get a national band level brand who is based out of Mumbai or Delhi, right? They, they would want us to be here. But still, we have managed to uh, grab some of, uh, some clients from Mumbai and Delhi. Uh, but that works. Uh, if, if given that the CMO is uh, good with like working remotely with, with the team, right? Thank you, Jason. Any questions from the audience? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. We really enjoyed you know talking to you. Thank you. Thanks, Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.